Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to my afternoon news report right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. Senator John McCain will no longer receive cancer treatment, family says. John McCain, the sixth-term Arizona senator and the Republican presidential nominee in 2008, has chosen to discontinue medical treatment for his brain cancer, his family said Friday. In a statement, the family said McCain has surpassed expectations for survival, but the progress of disease and in advance of age render their verdict, the family added. With his unusual strength of will, he has now chosen to discontinue medical treatment. The senator, who would be 82 next week, has been away from the Capitol since December. McCain, a former Navy pilot, was held as a prisoner of war in Vietnam for more than five years. He was elected to Congress in the early 1980s and was elected to the Senate in 1986, replacing Barry Goldwater, who retired. McCain gained a reputation as a lawmaker who was willing to stick to his conventions rather than go along with party leaders. It is a stick that draws a mix of respect and ire. He has been a frequent target of criticism from President Donald Trump, especially for his vote against a Republican replacement for Obamacare. Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said on Twitter that he was very sad to hear this morning update from McCain's family. We are so fortunate to call him our friend and colleague, John Cindy and the entire McCain family are in our prayers at this remarkable, difficult hour, McConnell said. Arizona Governor Doug called McCain an American hero who always put his country before himself. He also said spirit of service and civility guided McCain's life, standing as a model for Americans regardless of political affiliation. McCain's wife Cindy tweeted, I love my husband with all of my heart. God bless everyone who has cared for my husband along this journey. McCain underwent surgery in July of 2017 to remove a blood clot in his brain after being diagnosed with an aggressive tumor called a goloblastoma. It's the same type of tumor that killed Senator Edward M. Kennedy at the age of 77 in 2009. McCain rebounded quickly, however, returning to Washington and entering the Senate in late July to a standing over for his colleagues. In a dramatic turn, he later cast a deciding vote against the Republican health care bill, earning the war of Trump, who frequently criticized McCain's vote at a campaign event. McCain's condition worsened last fall and he has been in Arizona since December. Former Connecticut Senator Joseph 
life for a man. A close friend said Friday that becoming John McCain's friend has been one of the greatest blessings of my life. Today I am praying for him and his family. This is a developing story. Check back for updates. And here is the Twitter tweet from Megan McCain. Take a look. Emotions run high as John McCain's second favorite state. Emotions are probable in New Hampshire political community today. Friends of Senator John McCain are thinking of him with deep affection in the wake of an announcement by his family that he has now chosen to discontinue medical treatment 14 months after he was announced that he had been diagnosed with an aggressive form of brain cancer. New Hampshire primary vote. John McCain's signature victories. Let's take a look at the video. Nissan's bottom line model year-end event. Get big clearance savings on the last of our 2018s. Like Rogue, with available Pro Pilot Assist. Hurry into your local Nissan store for great offers like this. Introduction to our historical segments here on Primary Vault, but the achievements of Senator John S. McCain in the New Hampshire primary speak for themselves. Two signature victories, different in unique ways, yet similar in revealing the underlying truth that a candidate can start from scratch or be stripped of all the finery of our political system. And if they have the right message and the trust of the people, they can win. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, and God bless. And welcome to our 115th town hall meeting here in New Hampshire. <laughs> and I think I think we finally have a poll without a margin of error. <laughs> My friends, you know, I'm past the age when I can claim the noun kid, no matter what adjective precedes it. But tonight, we sure showed them what a comeback looks like. We are honored to have with us now two-time New Hampshire primary winner, Senator John McCain. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. Great to be with you. Thank you. At first, it does not seem like a natural pairing, an Arizona senator and a small New England state, but New Hampshire loves John McCain. Have you ever figured out how this natural rapport exists between you and New Englanders? I think it's a variety of factors, but one of them is that the people of New Hampshire want, as we called it, 2,000 straight talk. Uh, they're not interested in uh, uh, embroidery. They're not interested in evasion. They're interested in being able to come to a candidate's forum, whether it be someone's living room or the VFW hall or wherever, and, and ask the questions and get straight answers. I also think that there's a certain appreciation for military service amongst many. Um, but I think most of all, they take pride, as we all know, in examining the candidate. And with the hundreds of town hall meetings, they 
they had the chance to do that, and I don't think I ever got the, uh, a question. And then there's something intangible that I can't really describe, except you sort of get a connection with people. You sort of get a, you know, I, I, today I walked uh, to, uh, to Chick-fil-A, and there was a group of people there, and it's, hi, John. Hey, John. How are you, John? You know, as if we just <laughs> see left. each other. Yeah, <laughs> as if... As if we had never left. It's not high senator. It's not you know. It's hey John. So I have established a kind of relationship that is uh, unique and absolutely one of the most wonderful things in my life. In 2000, that entire statewide Republican power structure is going towards Governor George W. Bush, and you have to sort of build something out of nothing, essentially. You go to Peterborough. You have an ice cream social, only a handful of people show up. And with most free of them, ice cream. That's right. <laughs> that's was right. that discouraging at all when you were starting with so few people? It, it's not so much as discouraging because you realize, I mean, I realized that George W. Bush was the odds-on favorite, and, and we had to just put one foot in front of the other. Uh, I've got to admit, though, there was times, particularly in that summer, that uh, you know, that just it was really kind of tough. And then it wasn't until later on that it that it sort of then you could start feeling momentum. But there was a period for quite a while where we were just just somebody from Arizona who was another one from Arizona. <laughs> what kept you going? <laughs> oh, it was, I loved it. You know, I loved the campaign. I loved to be on. One of the beauties of, of New Hampshire, as opposed to many other places, there's also a lot of towns. There's a lot of places to go in New Hampshire. There's not just one metropolitan area, well, we certainly have a metropolitan area, but it's, and so traveling from place to place, a diverse state, uh, Portsmouth, uh, Berlin, uh, you know, it, it's just great. It's just great. And you know that even though maybe people may not think you have a chance, they're still going to look at you and give you a chance to make your case. Was there an advantage to having to build a political organization here from the ground up? Mm, it was just sort of the hand I was dealt. Um, so it wasn't an advantage per se. In fact, you know, made the the climb steeper. But I but I would like to point out one thing, and that was Warren Rudman. Now Warren Rudman was really one of the giants of the United States Senate. And when Warren Rudman brought me here to New Hampshire and had me meet all of his political connections and friends, that was huge. I don't know. I. Look, a lot of respect and everybody, but over a long period of time, I think Warren Redman was probably one of the most respected members of the Senate and here in New, in New Hampshire. That really had an impact. The town hall that you mentioned, this concept of going and answering all the questions, has really become a mainstay of New Hampshire politics now. You've changed the way that state and local politics are conducted. Uh, I'd like to ask a question about craftsmanship, political craftsmanship. As you're up there on the stage, you get an adverse questioner or someone who's upset or someone who's angry or doesn't agree with you politically. Okay, and there you go on some of this video. If you want to watch the entire video, we will have a link for you on the Riley King Network Facebook page. And that is it for my afternoon news report right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon, and I'll see you back here later on today for the Riley King Newscast and for an evening news report. Goodbye, everyone.